and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly programme giving you the facts on climate change. Coming up in our report, it's still cold in the Arctic, but it's warming up fast. But what we're seeing is the more you push nature, the more nature will sort of strike back. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. It's time to update the record books. Not only was it the second warmest February on record worldwide, but here in Europe, the entire winter period from the beginning of December until the end of February was 3.4 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. And that makes it by far the warmest winter on record. Now, let's have a look at what's been happening on a global scale with this map of the surface temperature anomaly for February. We can see here the late summer in Antarctica was warmer than average. Over in Australia, it has been cooler than average. And up here in Europe, yes, milder, but also across Siberia and Central Asia, significantly warmer than average in February. Now, we can look at Arctic sea ice cover, which was down last month. Scientists have calculated that there are around 850,000 square kilometers less sea ice than you would normally expect for the time of year. And that amounts to about the same as the surface area of continental France and Italy combined. So let's zoom in on the location of our report, the village of Arbisco in northern Sweden, a place where, because of climate change, the average annual temperature has passed from below zero to above zero. You can see on this chart, the annual temperatures have fluctuated since 1960, but gradually risen, and this is the zero line here. So what does that look like on the ground? Well, we sent our reporter Lindsay Rempel to Arbisco to find out. It's winter in Abisko, Sweden. That means snow, ice, and temperatures that average around minus 15. This place looks like places north of the Arctic Circle usually do, frozen. But under all that snow are big signs of change. Keith Larson is a climate scientist, and he's here to make sense of it. Here we have a weather station where we've measured the temperature with a thermometer since 1913. But this tree is a thermometer, and all these trees are thermometers. Using historical data from trees and temperature readings that go back over 100 years, this weather station shows that Abisko is warming at least twice as fast as the rest of the world. Larson says this is because of feedback loops. As the snow and ice melts, it reflects less sunlight, making it melt faster. By 1989, with the exception of 2010, all years are warm years. So that doesn't mean it's not cold in the winter. This is still the Arctic. But we've lost our cold winters. In the tourism center in Abisko National Park, the entire exhibit is dedicated to the changes in the local landscape. Native plants and animals are under threat. Now we have the Arctic fox in the higher, higher areas of the mountain, and then we have the red fox coming up. And if they meet, the red fox conquers out the Arctic fox. Here in Abisko, the locals are seeing changes that they say aren't visible to people farther south. Take, for example, that tree line. It used to be much, much lower, but now every year with temperatures getting warmer, it's moving up the mountain. Thomas Kuminen is Sami, a local indigenous community. And he says every year things are getting harder for those who still live traditionally herding reindeer. This is uh, our and our neighboring district's winter pastures. So it's been really sort of a, a scattered grazing these last years. Warmer weather means more rain, which freezes, locking up lichen under a layer of ice and leaving reindeer to starve. Tomas says some families this year have even corralled their reindeer and are feeding them by hand, even though they say it's not good for the animals. What kind of future do you see? A world of uncertainty. You know, when we ask our elders, like, how do you do when, when the winters are like this? How, 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 do you, how, how did you do? And, and, and our elders are like, we don't know. You see more insects. It's not today that Tomas worries about. It's how to save winter for the next generation and what a March day in Abisko will look like to them. You can read more about the changes in the Arctic and see all of the data presented in this program on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time.